Okay, so on this video, what um, what we're going to learn is how to set up a wax pattern, what we call a wax pattern for casting. So I've got a green ring here that's been carved out of a special carving wax, and we're going to turn that in this case um, into white gold because it's a matching ring for this beautiful engagement ring here. So the green one will be the wedding band um, to match this lovely white gold pearl ring. So. It's been shaped and carved by, um, by Mr. Cunningham, one of, one of the teachers here at Woodvale, for his lovely wife-to-be. It's got a little, little um, sort of a groove taken out of it because it's got to match the underside of this wedding band, so it's uh, engagement band, so it sits together really, really neatly like that. He's done a lovely job because it's a nice, neat match for that actual engagement ring. Beautiful. So we need to turn then this this um, this wax green wax pattern. We call that a pattern, and we're going to turn that into white gold following this process. It's quite a simple process, but it just requires a few steps being um, being followed. All right. So we've got a rubber base here, and on that rubber base we're going to build what we call a tree. So this is a very simple tree. It's just got the one ring. So the tree has to have a base and this is the base here and this is rubber. Into this little hole in the middle we stick what we call a bullet, just a little bullet shaped piece of wax. Later the, all the wax is going to be melted out and that will leave a cavity um, that we then fill up with the metal, in this case white gold. But can be sterling silver usually in, at school here we cast in silver. So attached to that I'm going to put this little riser here, that's called a sprue. It's like if, if we call this a tree, that's like one of the branches. We, the technical term is sprue, it's S-P-R-U-E. And I'm just going to melt that on the top there and then attach the ring to that. In fact, what I'll do is attach the ring first to this and then I'll attach both of them to this base here. So I'm going to hold the ring because this is quite a delicate situation. I'm going to hold the ring in these little tweezers like so just so that it holds it while I while we attach this sprue to it. Now, to attach it, um, I'm going to use a little soldering iron. It's, this is just like a soldering iron from electronics. It's a bit grubby, but it's really good for using with wax as well. And I'm just going to just going to heat it and cause a little puddle of wax to join both parts. So the ring to to this little sprue branch. So I'm just going to put a little bit of heat there. And that's lovely and I'm just going to give that a few seconds. So the wax that we've used to join it just sets nice and hard before we attach it to here. So it's really important that the bond, the join from that little branch here, the little sprue to the actual ring, that needs to be a really, really good attachment because later on, when it's melted out, silver's got to flow neatly through it without any issues into there. So that's nice and nicely attached there. So then I can take that off, and then it gets stuck on here like that. And then we put a tube around it. This tube here goes over the top and we fill the tube up with a special type of plaster that can handle very high temperatures, about 600 degrees, to then melt the wax out and then we fill the hole up on another day. It sits overnight, the next day we can fill it up with whatever metal that we're using. So I'm going to join that on now. Just give a nice puddle of wax down here. Nice, keeping it nice and straight. So this is just a one pattern set up. Often we have maybe up to five or ten depending on what the little pattern is. Um, but this is just a simple ring we're just going to do the one because it's nine carat because uh, it's uh, white gold, 18 carat white gold. So we're just going to do one thing on there. Beautiful. Now what we then need to do is get our flask and stick the flask into the rubber base without dislodging the actual pattern. Now this will be easy because it's only a little one one pattern project but often if you've got six or seven things sticking out it can be tricky. 
the issue is we don't want to dislodge it and we don't want the wax to be touching the walls at all and in that case it's not and also the top of the little pattern in there is well below the top of the tube so we need at least a centimetre and maybe a half or at least a centimetre and preferably a centimetre and a half between the top of the tube and the top of the little wax thing inside there but what we've got here now is perfectly ready to what we do the next step is what we call investing where we pour mix and plaster up special plaster and pour it in around the actual pattern in there that ring pattern and then when that's set nice and hard we can melt the wax out and fill the hole up with the metal in this case it's um, 18 karat white gold okay thanks for watching hope you learnt something good on you guys excellent here with mr cunningham and again and what we showed you with the last little video was how to set up his little um, wedding ring well this is going to be a 18 karat gold wetter and we showed you how to set it up on the sprue on that little thing that we called a wax tree so the next step now is to mix some plaster up and pour it in there technically that process is called investing we're investing the plaster into this metal tube um, with this metal tube is just stainless steel tube it's actually off a car exhaust pipe and uh, it's good because it can handle high temperature and uh, which we need to use obviously to, to melt it out it's called a flask um, and so that's set to go I'm just going to move it to the side while we mix the plaster up to do that we need this big rubber mixing bowl this is really good because later we're going to have to pour we're going to have to pour the plaster out um, of this bowl so we're going to use this rubber thing that's a, a proper mixing bowl some people work by measuring the weight and all that and do it quite technically I prefer to look at the consistency of the investment as I'm mixing it and that'll tell me whether I've got a good mix or not and I figured out that one level cup one of these blue Ikea cups um, and with an amount of water so I just tip that in the bowl and I've got a pre-arranged amount of water here up to a marked line and just pour, pop that in I'll put in that there now I may need to add a bit of either water or plaster to get it right then I've got one of these just like cooking mixing wands because this has got to be mixed super super well <laughs> To get right to the bottom because the pow the um, the powder tends to collect at the bottom and we've got to get that mixed in. Now that's really really good. So if I pick that up, it's just nicely sort of pouring off there. Could put a tiny bit more powder in just a just a whisker beautiful okay we want the consistency to be like runny custard so I'm just going to pop that there so if I do pick it up like that it's just sort of dripping off the finger there which is that's a really really good consistency trouble is now this plaster here is full of air bubbles so from now I've got about seven minutes that I've got to do this with before it sets so I've got to move quick we've got to get rid of those air bubbles and there's a special machine which I'll show you to do that it's just here this is called a vacuum casting machine and it's got two sides and this first side we're using now we put the plaster mix there put a bell housing chamber thing over the top and it works by sucking air out of this out through a brass um, little fitting there and away including any air that's in the plaster it rises as air bubbles to the top any air bubbles in the plaster will end up as little extra bumps on the ring so we don't want them we'll just turn it on and I'm just going to jiggle it and in a second we'll be able to see a whole lot of air bubbles we just go in the camera right in there all the little air bubbles are starting to rise to the top which is good because it means they won't be in the plaster so that's really really good we'll just release it now and all those air bubbles are popping and we're in business so that's going to 
going to be a really nice mix to pour into our little pattern there. Turn that off. I'm just going to lift, just give that a little second, lift this bell housing, give it a twist and pull it off. And then I've got our little flask with our little ring in here. And I'm just going to gently, little bump, I'll just catch him there. Gently pour him in and almost go to the top, but not quite. Beautiful. Now, we still need to agitate that because there may be some little air bubbles in there. So I'm just going to, this table set on little springs so you can bump it up and down, agitate it. That'll bring any last remaining little air bubbles to the top. Beautiful. So, the reason for doing all that bumping and sucking the bubbles out, if, if there's an air bubble on the wax pattern, that air bubble will be filled up with the metal, which will make it like a water, or an extra lump that we'd have to take out of there. So that's a really good mix. Um, everything's ready. It's got to set overnight, and then we'll slowly melt the, wa the wax out. Um, in an oven, so we'll go to sort of 100 degrees, 200 degrees, 400 degrees, and then we'll finish at 600 degrees. All the wax will vaporise, and it'll leave the ring a hole, the shape of the ring, and the little spree riser, and that bullet, the wax bullet, and then we can tip it upside down. And there's another process for for um, investing the silver, pouring the silver into this mould that we've created with the flask. So that's excellent. Thank you for listening. Hope you learnt something. One more thing I'm going to do is just write um, the teacher's name, Mr Cunningham, and 18 karat gold, so we don't accidentally put the wrong metal in the wrong flask, because I've got lots of other ones and they all look the same. So we've got to carefully label it with masking tape, and we're good to go. So thanks for listening, guys.